Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, How Does God Hear All Our Prayers at Once? And our scripture is Hebrews chapter 13. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you've ever wondered how God can hear all our prayers at once, you're definitely not alone. It's a fair question, but difficult to grasp because we're so limited in our understanding. God even told us that His ways are much higher than ours in any direction you care to point. I've been asked that question many times by people of all ages, but the children by far are the ones who've asked that question most. And most often, it's on a Sunday during worship at the children's time. It's hard to do a a two-and-a-half-minute explanation of something that complicated, but let's try. There are seven-and-a-half billion people on earth right now, and let's say only half of them even believe in God. So only half of them pray, and not all at the same time. But let's be generous and say about a a half-a-billion pray several times a week. So, at any given time, there are, I'm guessing, maybe 50 to 75 million prayers offered during an average day. If it's a short prayer, Oh God, I need to win this lottery just once, please, please, please. Well, that one won't get much of God's attention, I'm sure. But if it's an unselfish prayer to bless someone or heal a tumor, there might be a couple hundred thousand of those an hour. How does God multitask that? Well, even on my best days, I can't listen to more than one conversation at a time. My wife is a magnificent multitasker for a human, and her limit is less than a dozen. C.S. Lewis gave, in one of his books, the best explanation for that problem of God handling all the requests at one time. His answer is that God is not constrained by time because, as the creator of time, he controls it. Here's the explanation Lewis gave in his book, and it satisfied even my dense mind. Quote, Suppose I'm writing a novel. I write, Mary laid down her work. Next moment came a knock at the door. For Mary, who has to live in the imaginary time of my story, there's no interval between putting down the work and hearing the knock. But I, who am Mary's maker, do not live in that imaginary time at all. Between writing the first half of that sentence and the second, I might sit down for three hours and think steadily about Mary. I could think about Mary as if she were the only character in the book, and for as long as I pleased, and the hours I spent in doing so would not appear in Mary's time, the time inside the story, at all. I recommend that you read the rest of Mr. C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity, you'll not regret it. For you today, I can't do better than that for a wise understanding of God's ways. But taking Mr. Lewis at heart, here's a thought for today's musing. A God who has eternity to be outside even our split-second need, and is without limit in knowledge and power, yet loves us enough to die for us, is more than able to do, as Scripture informs us, exceedingly abundantly above that which we could think or ask. It seems we should wonder less how God could possibly hear and answer all the billions of prayers and spend a little more time in prayer, trusting the God who hears and answers. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.